everybody, I'm Amanda with Dev Express, and welcome to today's webinar, Getting Started with Angular 2 and Dev Extreme Widgets, presented by Dev Express Web Program Manager, Mahul Harry. In today's session, see how easy it is to start a new Angular 2 project and add Dev Extreme Widgets to it. You'll also learn about Angular CLI, widgets customization, and data binding, illustrated by reviewing our new Angular 2 demos. This session is being recorded and it will be made available on our DevExpress YouTube channel later today. We will also do a live Q&A at the end of this presentation. Just type your questions in the GoToWebinar control panel at any time throughout the broadcast. All right, thank you so much for joining us. I will now hand things over to Mahul. Thank you, Amanda, and welcome, everybody. I'm excited. So many of you are here today. Angular is a fantastic framework, and we are now at version 2.0. And with that, DevExpress has officially released support for it in the 16.2, specifically 16.24 release. So today, what I want to do is I want to cover exactly what that means. And it's uh, as titled, Getting Started with uh, DevExtreme and Angular 2. So uh, there's not much to this uh, webinar other than lots of code and examples. Uh, I'm not going to get into the sort of theory and so forth because there was a very good prior webinar uh, by our excellent uh, guys Julian and Paul and they went into sort of a, a nice deep dive with a, a DevExtreme, TypeScript, and Angular. And I, I don't want to sort of cover some of the conceptual stuff that they already covered. And honestly, uh, in, if you're not into video, the Angular website itself actually has a, a ton of great topics uh, about it. And it would take too long to talk uh, cover sort of the architecture and uh, sort of the con conceptually why things are the way they are. Instead, I want to get into sort of the practical bits. You know, I'm, I'm the kind of guy who likes to just get his hands dirty with code and, uh, you know, start using things. And uh, that's what I want to show today. How do you do that? How do you get started with Angular 2? And uh, is it complicated? What does it take to get started with DevStream? And uh, as you know, I, I kind of like to boil things down, make them understand them as much as possible. And what I found, it's actually really easy to get started with DevStream and Angular, you know. Uh, uh, and I'll, and sort of I want to lead you to where to go next after that and how to create some real beautiful interfaces. All right, so Angular 2.0. Basically, uh, for the sake of this webinar, uh, I'm going to call it Angular. The same, and this is because even though it's Angular 2, the Angular team calls it Angular. Uh, for Angular 1, for example, if you go to angularjs.org, they themselves say, hey, AngularJS is the original version. If you want to try the new Angular, then go to uh, angular.io, which is essentially Angular 2. And that's because they don't want to give it numbers. It's kind of like the iPhone. They don't call it like iPhone 6, 7, 8. They just call it the iPhone, whichever the latest one is. All right, so in the, in the same vein, when I say Angular, I mean current Angular 2.0. All right, and if you're using Angular, you already know it's got some great things built into it. And specifically for 2.0, they've improved things like performance, uh, tooling, and uh, it's still used by a ton of different people all over the world. And if you want to take a look at all the great features for cross-platform cross and so forth, definitely take a look at the Angular website. So what I'm going to do today is focus in on how to get started with Angular. And specifically, I'm going to use a tool called Angular CLI. So if you click on Get Started here, it'll take you over to a very quick, uh, uh, quick start. And uh, again, I'm only going to talk about one specific thing, which is components. There's a lot in Angular, uh, I shouldn't say a lot, there's a lot of conceptual things in Angular that may be different from how you work with client-side applications. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that in terms of DevExtreme. But specifically, component is at the heart of Angular. Everything is a component, as they say in Angular. And what they mean by that, component is basically just an HTML template and a component class, which allows us to create uh, what's going to be output to the screen. And it could be as simple as this. For example, here's a component, that's, and selector simply refers to the tag, and what, what the output was going to be. For example, here we've got a simple H1. And so this allows us to define uh, custom tags and so forth, but it's really 
conceptually how Angular works and how DevExtreme has been adapted to work within Angular, as I'll show you in just a sec. Now, the other thing with Angular is they understood that if you look at an Angular app, it can be very complicated. So they have boiled it down and made it super simple with this tooling called the Angular CLI or command line interface. And it takes essentially four commands to get started with a new Angular 2 project. So let's do that. We're going to go with the same approach that they do. All right, so uh, the first thing you have to understand is you'll need this Angular CLI installed. And if you don't have it installed, you want to run this npm install minus g angular dash CLI. And there's a command to install the latest version as well. So, uh, and the reason I mention that, and I'll talk a little bit about more at the end is, within the client-side world, within Angular and all these node packages, things can, things aren't always as smooth as you would expect them to be, but we'll talk a little bit more about it at the end. All right, so with that, uh, I've got the npm installed, so next is I can call the ng-new command. So let's say ng-new, and I say, hello world, and what that's going to do, it's going to create for me a project. It's going to create a, a subfolder, create all of this folder structure and all of the specific files. And as it does that, it's also in creating a package.json. Now, if you're familiar with Node, package.json is where we store uh, settings for NPM as well as Node packages and so forth. And uh, Angular has done a great job uh, to define that. And it's already using some great uh, approaches uh, built in. And so what's nice about using this ng-new command is Angular team has realized, hey, look, everybody isn't always you know, clue, uh, clued in as to what we recommend. And so what they're saying is by using this ng-new command, you get an application that works right out of the box and it already follows our best practices, which is great. I don't have to think about, hey, what folder structure do I need to set up? Where do I put my uh, uh, source files versus my testing files? And so, uh, again, I won't get too much into the folder structure, but there's definitely a lot of great uh, 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 documentation on the Angular website. Now, uh, if you take a look at the Angular website, for example, here, they talk about uh, how to set up the development environment. But they have everything in terms of guides, in terms of setting up, getting the commands, as well as uh, architecture. Now, uh, again, I won't talk about it, but as I mentioned, everything is based on a component. And they do things a little differently with event binding and property binding and how data is uh, uh, sent over to your component. It's using a lot with dependency injection. So uh, you're not going to data bind necessarily the same way. It's going to ask for the data rather than uh, directly bind to it uh, and so forth. I'll show you this stuff in just a second. All right, so when you first get started with Angular or any node packages, you'll know that you've you got to go out to the Internet and get this stuff. All right, so let's go CD, hello world. And uh, I'm going to be using Visual Studio Code. Now, you can use just about anything to uh, work with uh, projects, but in essence, I, I kind of like Visual Studio Code. It's, uh, it's Visual Studio Lite, as they say. So I want to first show off, before we go on to that next command, see, they basically, as they recommended, they said, look, if you start off, just do ng-new, go into your project, and then call ng-surf. This is going to put your application in production. But before I do that, I want to talk a little bit about uh, what we've got here. So. As I mentioned, we've got a, uh, they, they've made a folder here for your testing based off node modules you're not going to touch. This is basically where all the NPM packages are downloaded and so forth. And of course, this is the majority of the place where most of our work will be done. This is all the project based stuff and this is all the uh, uh, more specific code based stuff for our web project. So here we've got everything that we need. And so what Angular is telling us that at this point, by just Giving that ng new command, we have created a project. Now, I can keep using this. One of the reasons I like Visual Studio Code is when I hit uh, command tilde here, it gives me a little PowerShell. And now I can call that command ng serve. So ng serve is a, 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 a command that basically kicks up this live development server and calls Webpack on our modules. So now it is building our site. It's taking a look at all the components building the modules and so forth, 
uh, bundling and minifying all that good stuff. And once it's completed, it tells us, hey, it's done, and it's serving this locally to us. So now I can come in here. We can just go localhost 4200. All right. So at a bare minimum, uh, what we've got is a very simple project. And what's nice about this, and yes, you might say, well, it doesn't really show anything, doesn't do anything. That's okay. That's uh, exactly what they meant to do. What they want us to learn here is that, look, you've got a folder structure and you've got a really good starting point for where to go next. So now uh, let me just talk a little bit uh, about uh, how to get started with DevExtreme in here. Now, uh, at a bare minimum, uh, let me just, actually, you know what, let's go back uh, one step. I mentioned everything is a component, and the majority of things that you're going to be working with is in the app folder. And this is where we define, for example, the base, for example, in this case, we call it app. This is the starting point for us. Now, if we take a look at our index.html, you can see that here we've just got a very lightweight uh, HTML. And in it, we've got basically a tag called app root. Now, that's not a standard tag. So what's going on here? Well, the Angular team has essentially created this for us. And that's because uh, in, in the app component here, we have created a component with, uh, called app root. And essentially, this is our main starting point. Right? And so in here, we've just got something where we set the title to app works. So in the app component, which is where we're defining what the HTML of that component will be, we're outputting app works. So that's all it is. That's all they wanted you to say is, look, you've got a starting point. Now go forth and add whatever it is that you want. Now, for sure, there are some other uh, uh, bootstrap templates like this that give you a starting point. I tend to like this one. This one is always... Uh, uh, sort of uh, being pushed. It's the latest version with the Angular CLI team that is uh, incorporating all the latest changes and all that good stuff. All right. So with that, how do you put DevExtreme in here? Well, the first thing is we need to import in DevExtreme. DevExtreme needs to be added. So DevExtreme is uh, available via Node, and so we're going to bring it in uh, via Node as well. To do that, just call NPM. Now, you can bring it in other ways. I tend to like this approach because whenever you add a package, for example, what I can do is I can add the packages here under dependencies under package JSON and then call NPM install. That works. That's totally fine. However, I'm going to call I'm going to call the command line interface here while I'm in the folder and say NPM install and then we're just going to call the uh, uh, the command for Dev Extreme Angular. So we're going to say Dev Extreme dash Angular, and I'm going to call minus save command. So what this does, the minus save command, well, the npm install will get the package, uh, grab the node modules. The minus save will update our package JSON, which is really nice. It's a little time saver. So I just kind of like that. I call a command and it updates uh, package JSON. So let's just take a look here. So as you can see, now we've got DevExtreme Angular 16.24. Now DevExtreme Angular is our repository that we have created. And yes, it's out there. If you look at GitHub, we've got a great DevExpress thing. And in it, we've got all these awesome packages. But specifically, DevExtreme Angular is sort of the, the Angular bridge that lets you use DevExtreme widgets within Angular. And we're constantly working on this. You can see people are already reporting great issues on it and all that good stuff. And this is only the first step. If, for example, you actually want to use DevExtreme widgets now, then what we need to do is we need to bring them in. So to bring them in, we're going to do a similar command. We're just going to call npm install DevExtreme with the minus save command. And that brings in the specific DevExtreme packages. So those essentially are the two main items we want to bring in, and this will update our node package as well. So, so far, we've done ng-new, we've done <clears throat> npm install for DevExtreme, and now uh, let's get into sort of the nitty-gritty. Let's add a button to this uh, little thing that says app works. So how do we do that? Well, the first thing is, now that we have these packages, that's great. We got the DevExtreme packages with our Angular 2 project, but we're not using them yet. We need to tell app module, hey, listen, 
I need to uh, start using these? Well, the first place is we want to update this. Now, everything I'm talking about here today, by the way, is absolutely, uh, 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 how do I say, is absolutely been documented within our Angular uh, documentation. So for example, all the stuff that I'm going to be talking about in terms of adding style sheets, uh, specific commands to call, it's all available on our getting started and our readme, et cetera, et cetera. So you can see we've already called this. So the first place we want to do is, as I mentioned, we want to tell Angular, <clears throat> hey, listen, I've added these node modules. Now I want you to start using them. So what you want to do is you want to come into app module. App module is where Angular understands, hey, there are specific modules that I want to use within this project. So for example, they already load a browser module, forms, HTTP, and so forth. So what we're going to do is we're going to import in the dev stream module. And it's exactly as you would imagine. Uh, you'd say import dev extreme module. And here, we're going to tell it specifically where to import it from. And in our case, it's going to be from dev extreme angular. And once that's done, that only is the import statement. To actually use it within this main module, what we want to do is list it as available here. So we're going to say dev extreme module. All right, with that, we have now enabled this project to use it. So the first thing is dev extreme uses a set of styles. Now, uh, what I what you want to do next is you want to bring those styles in. So specifically, there's a couple of styles available that we recommend. Now, by default, DevExtreme uses a, uh, a very similar bootstrap uh, theme. In fact, you can use almost any bootstrap theme out there, and DevExtreme widgets can adapt to them. But specifically, you need to use the base theme files if you're going to be using DevExtreme. Now, what's nice is in our current uh, style CSS, it's empty. I could put some styles here. But uh, what we want to do is we want to make sure that we import in the styles that are necessary to use with DevExtreme. So in your Angular CLI JSON file, this is uh, a, a sort of a settings file for our project. For example, we've set up uh, environments, uh, we've set up uh, certain commands, et cetera, et cetera. So what I want to do is I want to come in here and I want to include uh, styles. So for example here you can see we've got the styles uh, setting here. So what I want to do is I want to replace that with uh, uh, these two settings. And again this is all documented. But in essence we're pointing to the specific common and light themes. Common is necessary for all the widgets and the light is specific. There's a dark version as well if you prefer. Or you can use make your own custom one with our theme builder. But in essence why did I add the styles here? I mean couldn't I have just gone into index.html? Well, sure, but that's old school. That's push link. We don't want to do it that way because Angular says, listen, you could do things sort of the old approach or you can do them, as I like to say with my hands it, using air quotes here, the Angular way. And so the Angular way says, look, if you define your styles here, then what we're going to do is when we run Webpack and we create these modules, then we're automatically going to minify and bundle the CSS, which is great because this is going to reduce requests to the server, which is really nice. Again, this is one of those best practice things that they've taken the thinking uh, out for me. I don't have to think, how do I optimize? And Hey, listen, they've set up a project for us that makes it a lot easier to uh, do this approach. All right, uh, now that we've done that, we can actually start adding components. Now, I don't really care about this little app works thing. Instead, let's start adding a button. So I'm going to come in here, I'm going to say DX, button and what I want to do is just create the world's simplest example of a widget and that is a button right and a button has a text property and we're gonna call it like oh I don't know something very clever like dev extreme button in angular all right and then we're just gonna close this off and save it now we have essentially everything. Now, you saw earlier uh, I called ng serve, and I can do that again, but I want to talk about one thing. I, I do a lot of npm commands, npm install, npm install, et cetera, et cetera. So one of the things is under package.json, which npm works with, it has defined certain commands. For example, if I call npm start, that is just going to call ng serve. So you have a couple options here. I can call ng serve again, 
or I can call npm start. Uh, they both work, npm start, uh, start just calls ng serve. And so sometimes if you see me call npm start, it's just the same as ng serve. But that command, ng serve, is what's going to kick off our live development server, which is going to build uh, the webpack and so forth. So what is this live development server? Well, in essence, it's very similar. Uh, well, it, it basically says, look, I'm going to keep a watch on your folders, and if I see any changes within certain files, and that's important, I say certain files, then I'm going to rebuild that package and refresh this page, which is nice when you're working, because you don't want to have to constantly go save, refresh, so it's a nice little thing. But it's something you want to be careful with, because if, for example, you add a new package, this live development server, you're going to have to shut it down and rebuild the web packages because it's going to need to go get them. If you change something in Angular CLI. So I recommend that you only uh, keep the live development server running while you're working in these files. All right, so now uh, that we've done that, uh, we should have a button. So let's update this. And our local host has provided us a very simple button. But again, if I click it, it does nothing. It just looks like a very simple button because it doesn't actually have any code to do anything. So let's make it do something interesting and obviously we'll just use the good old on click equals uh, good old let's say hello world. So in it we'll say alert which isn't always best practice. Uh, you want to use something smarter and we'll talk about that in a minute. So we'll say hello and save this. Now once I save this you can see my live development server kicked off, rebuilt the package, and this web page refreshed itself. And now when I click this, I get a very simple alert, hello world. But that's not very useful. What I wanted to show is at a, at a bare minimum, we've done a few command line uh, commands, sorry for the pun, but basically those commands allowed us to build a project with best practices in it, and then I simply added dev extreme from the command line, I could have done from package.json, and I've enabled this project. And I already, from a few steps, I've got a button. And a button can do something. Now, again, I'm using air quotes here, best practices in Angular is an important concept because once you go that route, once you sort of uh, live in that world, it makes life a lot easier to work within Angular. So, for example, Angular provides a lot with event binding, property binding, and so forth. So that's sort of what I want to cover next, is how do we do that? Well, let's go, let's go a little bit forward. Now, uh, let's add a text box. And I'm going to come in here, and let's just say dx-text box. And the text box, I'm going to set it a width of, let's say, 300 pixels. All right, now I'm going to save that, but while it's building that, that's not really interesting. So what I want to do is I want to take this text box and, well, first of all, the text box doesn't look good. So what I want to do is I actually want to bring in uh, some CSS to make that text box look a little bit better. So I'm going to bring in this little CSS I got here that says, look, the DX text box, I want it to display as an inline block and aligned vertically. So now when I save this CSS, our, our uh, text box and our button should be uh, enabled side by side. All right, so that's great. But now, if I type in a name here, let's make our uh, alert pop, pop up here, grab that name and display it. Now, in the good old world of client-side development, you'd say yes, okay, go, you know, give this a, uh, an ID, maybe using jQuery or something, get that selector and then grab its value, but you know, Angular, doesn't want you to necessarily do it that way. Well, why is that? Well, because see, when we make a component, it's not just about HTML. It's actually a class. We can make things happen. Components uh, can be nested. Components can be, uh, you know, very powerful concepts within Angular. And so that's why Angular says, look, don't just make a, uh, don't just make HTML and start working with HTML. Do it within the Angular way, and life will be great. Okay, so to work, and, and so the first thing is, if we're going to get the value of this text box, then I need to grab it. So how do we do that? Well, this is where I want to bring your attention back to this excellent GitHub page. Now, the reason I keep referring to this is because we've done a lot of good work, not just in getting started, but using the samples. Now, specifically, 
if you go down to the using samples section, we talk a lot about the different types of binding. For example, when we got the DX button, I got a text property. This is a static string. There's nothing that I'm going to do here. So it doesn't really need anything specific here other than this is just a property of the Dev Express widget button. But if I've got a non-static string, right, it's, a, it's an option value, then you're going to need brackets around it. And if you're going to do event handling, then you're going to need parentheses, et cetera, et cetera. So how do you do one-way one -way binding, two-way binding? So I'm going to cover these examples. And another reason I keep bringing you back to that is because I'm going to likely not put this example out there because I'd rather you built it yourself, sort of following along either with that uh, GitHub page or this video. But I, it's, it's much better experience to step through this than it is to say, let me get cloned. I mean, it's such a simple example anyway. So, but there are some better examples that I'll show you a little bit later. So stay tuned for that. All right. So we need to get the value of this text box, and then we want the button to be aware of it. To do that, what I want to do is I want to come in here first and say, look, I am gonna, uh, I'm going to bind this value of this text box. To do that, I'm going to create a, uh, a two-way binding, and that is here, um, our value is going to be bound. And so now, when I do these brackets and parentheses, I am telling Angular, hey, listen, this property value of this widget is bound to an item within our exponent uh, class. So what could that be? Well, I'm going to create a variable called name inside our exponent class that is going to be bound to this value. So for, what's great is now that I have this text box, I can come back to our app component and we can simply create that. So the first thing I'm going to do is we're not using this title, so we'll just remove that. And instead, what I'm going to do is we're going to create a local string here called uh, name. And it's of type string. And again, oh, and by the way, let me, sorry for this side uh, thing. And again, Paul and Julian covered this in the previous webinar. But everything is TypeScript here. TypeScript is awesome. If you're not aware of TypeScript, we've done so many webinars already talking about TypeScript. But I highly recommend, if you're not already on the TypeScript bandwagon, definitely, definitely take a look. It's got some great um, uh, benefits to it, and it was so good that the team within Google, uh, the, uh, the Angular team, they loved it so much they adopted it. So it's it's a real nice story. All right. So with that, we've got uh, uh, our local variable name, which is now bound to our text box, which is great. But what are we going to do with this? Well, now we can do something interesting. So the first thing I want to do is now instead of this on click going alert hello world, right? Let's get this out of here. Instead, I want to make a, uh, uh, a method that says hello. So let's say we create a method called say hello. And say hello is what, where I want to uh, call uh, within my projects. So at this point, as you know, this is uh, generally going to look for say hello within here. So how do we tell Angular, listen, I don't want you to look for say hello here. I want this say hello to target as its result this event. Well, as I mentioned before, when you're binding, you have to let Angular know you're binding certain things. Well, the first thing is we can make this bound by putting it in parentheses. Now this this is an event. This event is now bound to our components. Say hello, which is great. Now the other thing is when you do this, when you go from uh, uh, you know a simple method to uh, something more, uh, for example, uh, event bound. What you want to do, for example, we're not going from this was a simple HTML attribute. So we're now going from that. It's not that anymore. It's now an app option of an Angular component. So we now made this on click an option. So when we do that, we want to make sure that we use the right terminology. So for the DX button, it is not on click with a lowercase c, it's with the uppercase c. So I want to make sure we do that. And this is where a lot of times in JavaScript, as you probably already know, you'll run into something you say, well, wait a minute, I typed on click. Well, you forgot to make something a capital. So just be aware of those little uh, gotchas. And we've done our best to uh, make that uh, highlighted on our page. All right, so at this point, we've got 
something called say hello, but you know what? It doesn't exist here. So it's not going to work. So what we want to do is we want to make sure we come back and say, look, what, what does our say hello look like? Well, our say hello is simply the same thing that we mentioned before. Oops, not that. Uh, we need to create say hello. And say hello uh, is a method that we're just going to call alert on, right? Great. So at this point, this does exactly the same thing as before. Uh, I've got uh, say hello. Now I'm bound to that option within our project. So if I hit this, it just says hello. But that's not what we wanted to do. We want to grab this value and then do that. Well, we can do that now because this value is being bound to this name property. So if I come in here and I say, look, let's uh, grab that name property. And I'll, you can do that using this uh, property. I get this dot name. And uh, we can simply say, great, now we have grabbed whatever the value was of it. And once this reloads, I can come in here and say, uh, Bob, Sam, et cetera, et cetera. And you can see we've got hello, Bob. All right, so that's all great. That's all nice. But what about, uh, let's, let's go a little bit further and understand, for example, how, how we can make this useful. One of the things, as I mentioned, is why use DevExtreme with an Angular? Well, one of the big things is we provide validation with uh, well, we provide our validation within Angular. For, and what that means is if you have used DevExtreme, you know that beyond all of the beautiful things that DevExtreme provides in terms of grid, a pivot grid, and chart, and gauges, and all that, we also provide you really powerful things like data validation. And so what's nice about that is I can take, for example, any four widgets and, and add certain rules to them. And they're really easy to add. So for example, here, I've made login a required field. And I can say, look, uh, if this is an error, I want you to change the color of it. And I want you to display into, let's say, a login summary. So it's, and what's nice is it's really easy to add. So for example, if I wanted to do that, I can see that under the text box, I can simply come in here and add that. Now, uh, let me make a quick mention. If you come to js.devstress.com, click on demos, it'll bring you to this page. And we've got demos in so many uh, styles. We've got jQuery, Knockout, Angular 1, Angular 2, our new MEC wrappers that are coming out soon. So we've got examples in a lot of things. But specifically, what we want to show you is very something very practical that says if you like to add, for example, validation, you can do that. Now, of course, we have documentation that talks about it, but sometimes you know a lot of developers want to look at code. So if I see here that if I want to add uh, uh, validation, I can bring this DX validator and we can add that. So let's do that. Let's go back to our Visual Studio code here. And if I go back to HTML here and if within our text box, I can say, hey, DX validator. Um, bu -bu 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 -bu. I'm still learning all these commands for aligning text in here. But in essence, instead of going, hey, listen, I want to uh, I want to make it login. I, I, ours is called name. So we're just going to simply call it name. But as soon as I do that, we can see that our code and our sample will be updated. And now when I do this, it'll say uh, hello is undefined. Well, it should say, uh, uh, it should go red. And this is one of the things I want to mention here as well is when you do use this approach, you want to make sure that you're using, uh, you're setting a property on the button. And uh, the property is use, uh, let's see, it's use submit behavior equals true. So let's, let me get that in here. All right, so while, while that's going on, let me open up a different little code here. Ah, okay, so let's back up just one second, okay? Let me go back here to our sample. And um, so in here, as you can see, I've got uh, different uh, selectors and different validators. So what's nice is, though, that 
we can provide a, uh, a property for them. Now, as I mentioned, when, when, when I'm using this, I'm submitting it as a form. So our button here has a property called use submit behavior. So we want to add that as well. So let me bring that in. So what this allows us to do is when I click this, then that validation will be kicked off. And the validation simply says, listen, this is a required text box. And if it is empty, then I want you to do that. So as you can see, our, our thing went off, but our, 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 our alert still went uh, uh, open. Now that's not a very smart thing to do. So let's make our sort of method a little bit smarter. And to do that, I want to highlight another sort of angular uh, uh, widget of knowledge. Uh, I wanted to say thing, but that's not the best approach. But anyways, Angular provides something called the event object. So the event object is, uh, let's see the best way to explain it. It's uh, an object within the scope of the expression. So what that means is, uh, you know, when, when we call certain items, then there's an event object that carries a payload of information that may be useful to the component. So in our case, that's exactly what I want to do. I want to know if this is empty. And in the Angular way, the way to do that is to pass in this event object. So we're going to do that. We're going to pass in event. And then in our, com in our app component, we can use that. So for example, I know I'm passing that event. Now we can call this anything. I'll just call it params. But what I want to do is now we can use this params. Now, how do I know what uh, the params is uh, useful for? Well, I can, I can check whether or not it's empty. Now I can, you know, I can check specifically for that text box, but then I have to give it an ID. So how do, what's a smarter way to do that? Well, the best way that uh, we recommend, and, and you can uh, see this in our app uh, component as well, is that uh, there are certain things that we can leverage. And in our case, we used what we call the validation uh, group. So for example, if I, if I create a group for all of this validation, then I can simply check if everything in that group is valid. And that's really much simpler. So how do we do that? Well, first, the only, basically, we just wrap everything in a validation group. To do that, we're going to take all of our uh, widgets in here and so forth and say, look, I've got multiple items in here. I've got a text box, et cetera, et cetera. I simply want to make sure that when I do this, it's uh, validated. Now, uh, to do that, I'm simply going to uh, save this. And once I do, I can come back here and I can say, look, if this uh, params, I can get to, to the object as, as uh, through params. If params dot the validation group, which is provided to us via DevStream, is validate uh, and call it validate method and is valid. That means listen, it's it's past the mustard, right? That it is doing exactly what I want it to do. Then great. So now we're simply going to wrap our alert in there, and this will help us take care. Of it. So now we can say ask it, look, listen, don't display the button unless it's past it. So now alert won't display and now we've made it smarter. So this is what a, the angular way of doing things is. How do you event bind? How do you pass in parameters? How do components talk to each other? And this is approach that they highly, highly recommend that you do. Now one last thing, beyond uh, this, let instead of alert, that's not very uh, slick. Instead, let's use another DevExtreme widget. Now, if you if you ever heard of the term toast, it's a sort of pop-up type widget that comes up. And a lot of times, like Outlook will do that. It'll pop up a little toast widget here. It'll appear for a few seconds and it goes away. It's very nice. And if you keep your eye on this section of the screen here, when I click Available, you'll see that it's telling me, hey, you just clicked Super LED. Hey, you clicked Super LED 4, et cetera, et cetera. And this is a really nice little widget that we can use. Now. To use it is actually really easy, and uh, so let's do that. And uh, for the sake of uh, marketing, we generally call it toast. Technically, we call it notify, and it takes a couple of parameters. It takes the text, 
what type of uh, pop-up it is, and the timeout. So to use it, you, I see that I can simply call notify, but before I do that, I need to import in uh, this uh, notify widget. So let's do that first. First, I want to bring in the DevStream UI notify into our app component, and then we can start using it. So now I can simply come in here and say, instead of alert, let's use notify. But as you remember, it takes a couple of parameters. And in our case, uh, I, I, and this is all documented, but I'm going to use uh, the type called info. Now there's other types, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm going to make it on a display on the screen for uh, two seconds. So now once I hit uh, a save, our, our uh, web page should refresh. And once it does, what we can uh, do is uh, get rid of that ugly hello, and at the bottom of the screen here, we should get the exact same behavior and say, hey, Julian, and I click this, and it says, hello, Julian, and uh, as you can see, we already have a beautiful form-based pop-up widget, and it took very little to get here. Okay, one, one last thing is uh, about validation before I show uh, a, a little bit with the, a grid, and that is, where you display the errors. Now you saw that before it actually told me if this was empty, for example, it would say, hey, listen, this field is required. It's like, why is it not saying this? Well, I mean, it shows it if I click on it, but I actually want to display it. Because let's say if we had several editors, we want to be able to display that. Now, what's nice is I can use something called the validation summary, and it's very easy to do that. I can simply come in here, and underneath my button, we can make it uh, uh, do that. Now, there is a, there's a, okay, so I'm sorry, this is, I'm looking for the command for uh, aligning this. Okay, so there's basically this validation summary now allows us to display that. So if I hit save and hit uh, the error again, this will take any and all within the validation group, any issues that we have, hit enter and display them nicely here and say, look, you forgot this and I'm not going to pass muster until you say, hey, look, bring in a name and I can display it here. All right, all very nice, all very good. Now let's talk about the grid. Now the grid has uh, essentially one of it's one of our most popular widgets, and the reason I wanted to show this is because within Angular, data binding is done a little bit different, as we've already seen. So how does Angular do it? Well, as I mentioned before, Angular has a certain approach with architecture, right? Uh, dependency injection is very big with it. And again, we've talked about it. Uh, I've talked about it with Don in a previous webinar. And, and by, by the way, I know I'm saying, look, this is available. That's, do not worry. If there's anything you need, please contact me. Uh, I'm on Twitter, but I'm also, and I'll show you my email at the end of this. But there's, I can, you know, just reach out to me on here, and I will be happy to send you any links. All right, but specifically, in the architecture, uh, the way data is bound, for example, this component, it's not saying, listen, go to this data source directly. It's going to use dependency injection, uh, and there's a lot of benefits with dependency injection. But specifically, we're going to create a service that gets our data, and then we can use that to bind it with our component. So how do we do that? Well. To do that, we're going to need to create uh, our data. So in our case, I'm going to make our data local. And, uh, and uh, specifically, it's going to be uh, served, excuse me, what's going to be served right from our project. So I'm going to bring in some data here. And it's, like I said, just some local static data. To do that, I'm going to create a new file called app.service.typescript. And in it, I'm going to hit, I'm sorry, I'm going to create uh, uh, basically a class called company. Company has some properties in it, like ID, company name, et cetera, et cetera. It is simply a class. What, the let command uh, lets me say, OK, listen, I'm going to define an array of these company objects and statically populate that data. So, so far, all I'm doing is creating class populating some data within our service. And finally, I create a method called service. I'm sorry, a method called getCompanies on our class. 
So this allows us to return that array of companies, which we can now use to bind to just about anything. And uh, DevExtreme makes it very easy. So at this point, we've got our source of data. How do we use it? Well, we need to come back to our app component. And now we need to enable app component to start using it. To do that, we need to import in that service. So I'm going to do that by calling service. And specifically, we mean to use company. And in it, we're going to say, listen, this is coming from our app dot service. Once that has been enabled, we also want to let our component know, listen, there's a provider and it is service, our, our service uh, uh, class. Okay, so now this allows us to do that. Now make sure if you add a new uh, item, you put the comma, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, well, once it's done that, now we can add this. Now, what it can do is I want to store this data coming back from get company. So what I'm going to store that store that into? Well, I'm going to store that into a variable called data source, a local variable. And you can call it anything. I'm just calling it data source. And of course it's going to be of type company array, uh, an array of company because that is what get companies uh, returns. And how are we going to grab this? Well, I want to grab it when this component is first created. To do that, I'm going to override the constructor for this. So we can do that by simply call it uh, constructor and we're going to pass in a local variable called service which is of type service and we're going to uh, use that service that's passed into constructor because again we declared service so on construction it knows about this uh, service uh, as a provider and then we can call it and say look our local data source uh, uh, variable that I just created I want to populate it so I'm going to call service and I'm going to get it call its get companies method and that's it so on construction it's going to uh, call it get companies populate our local data source we now our component now has data so how do we use it well we come back over to app component and we add our grid. So to do that, uh, to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically uh, uh, simply call dx data grid and bind it. So before I do that, I'm going to add a very simple uh, break return here, and that's actually one of the nice things. Even though uh, a lot of this uh, is done. And yes, you can make a component out of this, but that's not wise. It's simply a couple of break returns. But basically, um, I've got uh, a DX data grid that I want to add. So I'm going to say DX data dot grid. All right. So how do we do uh, data binding to our grid? Well, as I mentioned before, data binding is done uh, in, in a multiple different ways. And as we've talked about before in our uh, uh, samples here, uh, there's a lot of uh, properties. So specifically in this case what I want to do is I'm going to do one-way uh, option binding. And so what I want to do is I want to tell grid, hey listen, go and bind over to the data source property. So the grid itself has a data source property and of course as I mentioned I'm going to do one-way binding so I'm going to put brackets around it and then I'm going to say listen you are going to be bound to this um, component uh, option, right? So our local data source variable, which is calling get companies on construction, is going to pass it over to DX data grid, and we should now have a grid that is populated. Now, before I save this, let's get this popped up here. And once I hit save and the packages are rebuilt, we'll see that it took very little because essentially I'm using the Angular approach to create a service. There's nothing magical about that. Essentially, we've, we've served up some data. But to actually get a grid and to display it that supports sorting and all that stuff, it took very little. So I want to go a little further and show you how easy it is to start customizing this. And you can follow, you can take examples of this right from our very own, um, our own samples. So for example here, I've got a grid, it's got a nice pager, uh, and I can see it's limited to 10 records and it, I can change it to 5 or 20. How do I do that? Well, I see here they've got this P 
pager and I can do a, a paging, et cetera, et cetera. So if I just bring that in, will I get the same results? Let's see. Well, bring it into our data grid, set it, and I'll hit save. And you can see, just by adding a couple options, we're already making our grid more powerful. So I've got a grid now that can do this. I've got a grid that can um, change its uh, size. It's a very powerful way to get up and running. And again, let's say I wanted to add a search panel. Let's say, well first, let's make our grid a little bit better to look at and that not have it have so many columns. To do that, I'm going to bring in, uh, uh, I'm going to define uh, only to say, listen, I want to bring in company name, city, state, phone, and fax only. Just show me those five columns. And already our grid is starting to look cleaner. And I can go further and add some options to the grid like, look, I want to display every alternate row. And simply by adding this property, every alternate row will get highlighted. Again, you can make so many options, but that's the advantage of using DevExtreme within Angular. You get up and running very quickly, you get powerful widgets, and you get other great functionality. So for example, I want to add, for example, a, a way to search within this grid, and a way to export out of that. How do we do that? Well, it's really easy uh, from the same examples as I said before. We, we have all of this code, but basically here, I just said, look, add a search panel, okay? And call it search, and I wanted uh, 240 pixels wide. And also, by the way, enable exporting. As soon as I do this, DevExtreme is smart enough to know what widgets it needs to load up and how to provide this functionality. So now I can come in here and say, you know what, find me Texas, all the rows that have Texas in it. It'll do that. Once I clear that, it's cleared out. Or I'll say, you know what, <clears throat> export for me all the data. And once I do that, it's shown me, by, you know, I haven't defined which format I want, so by default we choose Excel, but it supports multiple formats and you can choose those as well. All right. So now I hope you have full confidence how easy it is to get started with Angular, how easy it is to add DevExtreme. Now I highly recommend if you are interested, you know, take a look at uh, some of our previous webinars. In this one, uh, Paul and Julian show how to add a chart and do a similar type of binding. And again, I wanted to show you know, some of the changes that have happened in Angular. This was almost, uh, yeah, this was like mid last year. And so Angular has changed, you know, the CLI is really a big thing now, but I like a lot of the stuff that, you know, Paul and Julian cover in here as well. So I recommend that. I recommend starting with Angular's uh, documentation and then come to uh, our uh, page and take a look. But I want to talk about where do we go next from here, all right? So two last topics to cover if we jump into questions. And the first is, where do you go next? Well, obviously you want to start at DevExtreme Angular. That is where we've got all of these examples. If you find an issue with our Angular stuff, feel free to report it. We're getting a lot of great feedback, and we love GitHub. We'd love to, uh, you know, have you guys. Hey, if you got any pull requests, go for it. I mean, if you got any suggestions why something's not working, go for it. If you want a new widget, tell us. Now, if you find something uh, core in DevExtreme, there's always DevExtreme uh, support .com where you can report DevExtreme uh, items as well for the widgets. Now, the place to go next is obviously DevExtreme Angular, but we've got more powerful examples. So specifically, we made this recent example called DX Election. And you know, uh, this was so popular in the news that there was so much data, we said, you know what, let's take all that data and make something really interesting. So for example, we said, look, what if people want to see you know, uh, what the results were like for a particular state? Well, if I click on Idaho, you can see that our widget here lets us drill down into it and automatically update this. And what's nice is a lot of this is responsive. And uh, for example, this elections uh, results uh, for the last uh, two elections we've incorporated and it's all within this beautiful demo. And the code for all of this is available on our GitHub page. So DX election is one of those. Now, most recently, uh, and um, by the way, I'm sure I should mention, it's using Angular 2 and DevExtreme. And most recently, we also have the Golf Club um, demo. Now, Golf Club was initially written in the DevExtreme framework. And then we ported it to use uh, the uh, Angular 2. So both DX Selection and Golf Club were started the exact same way. They were both started with ng-new. 
and then we started, and then in npm install, all that good stuff. But then we added all the assets. The reason I bring it up is because uh, we want you to take a look at those. So if I just, and here, I just did a git clone on that golf club example that you see here, which is really nice. It shows off all the editors and validation, all that stuff, but also the beautiful scheduler. It's, it's really uh, an amazing demo. But what's nice is it lets you take a look specifically exactly how we're doing things. So obviously you can see from package JSON, it's got the dev stream uh, items. But beyond that, you can say, well, let me take a look and see how are they serving up data. I see they've got different services to uh, uh, show up data. For example, all the different clubs, you know, we've got them uh, uh, listed in here. And then how are they displaying them? For example, if I take a look at the club component um, uh, here, I can see that we, uh, d uh, we've got what, something called responsive box. Well, this is a really nice widget that allows you to create adaptive pages. So specifically here, I've created a couple of sizes that I wanted to react on and so forth. So again, uh, these are all really interesting examples that let you dive deeper into Angular and DevExtreme widgets. And so as you can see the responsive box there doing its thing. And you can actually you can see it better on the home page here and so forth. All right, so with that, let's stop. And I just want to say thank you very much. I'm excited. If you're a fan of Angular, please give it a try. I think DevExtreme within Angular can help you create some beautiful sites like this. And we'd love for you to let us know. Now, while Amanda, I give it back to you, I will simply warn one last thing is in the JavaScript world, and our, our devs are well aware of this, and if you've been working in that world, you are probably aware of this as well. Things aren't always smooth, and that's okay. And I know that sounds weird, but for example, this Angular CLI last Thursday was broken, just completely broken. You went ng new and nothing compiled, and it all happened because one of the pa sub packages ng relies, uh, Angular relies on uh, kind of broke it. Well, the good thing is they fixed it within hours, and you know, it kind of seems odd if you worked within sort of the server-side programming world with assemblies and stuff, you're like, well, that doesn't really happen that much because people don't just, you know, deliver a new package every, you know, 30 minutes or something like that. It's okay. It just takes a bit of a shift in thinking and uh, I, would, I would basically recommend, you know, take a deep breath, uh, report the issue, and I promise you things uh, will be addressed. And that's one of the advantages of being in the open source world is that, you know, the communication is great. You get a lot of back and forth. And of course, you know, don't forget our excellent support team. We're here to help you. All right, with that, Amanda, I'll hand it back to you. Great, Mahul. Well, the team uh, has been amazing. They've answered every question but one behind the scenes. Um, one that just came in and it's asking about support on mobile for Android and iOS. Sure. So DevExtreme started its life as a mobile framework. And guess what? It still supports that. And that's why we call it the Footed Best Cross Platform Components Suite, et cetera, et cetera. All right. So uh, as you can see, and by the way, I should mention, if this looks new to you, this is the new site. I think we just launched it today. It's beautiful. It's awesome. All that good stuff. And um, you can take a look uh, at our website, and we've got all sorts of demos for uh, DevExtreme working within different environments. But we absolutely support uh, Android devices, iOS devices, and I think some Windows devices as well. But take a look at our site, and we, we've got examples of it. So you can look at documentation, you can look at getting started, all that good stuff. Does that uh, help? Great. I don't know. Sorry. Uh, we'll see if Kieran comes back. Do you have any plans to port the dashboard web designer to Angular 2 from Dave? That's a good question. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll, Julian, if you have an answer for that, go ahead and jump right in. So far, I don't know. I, I, Julian and Paul just uh, did a webinar on this last week. So if I don't have an answer for you right now, we will get you an answer after the webinar. I'll just jump in and say um, there are plans to, um, how can I put this? 
I don't want to say port it to Dev Extreme, port the dashboard to Dev Extreme, but certainly Dev Extreme is extremely useful within the dashboard. So all I can say at this particular point in time is there are changes afoot. Um, I can't comment about what they are or even what timetable we have for them. Uh, but please, you know, Angular is great fun and we're enjoying it. Um, so maybe. Great. So I see. Thanks, Julian. I see somebody asked about uh, React. Uh, we are looking into React, and we'll have more news for you in the coming weeks and months. But absolutely, it's also an interesting framework, uh, and I and I like it as a uh, lot as well. So, Marcel, stay tuned. Somebody asked about Bootstrap. Okay, so I mentioned Bootstrap in the webinar, but basically, our our base theme already looks like Bootstrap. So if you're just using the basic Bootstrap theme and start using DevStream with it we're going to fit right in. But if you've got a custom uh, a f uh, a less file from a Bootstrap style, upload that here and you will find that our DevExtreme widgets can easily adapt to it. And that's it. That's all it takes. So the answer is yes. You can. Uh, you don't even have to modify. You can modify our style sheets if you like, but this theme builder takes care of it for you. So it's a very, very nice uh, feature built right in. Now, uh, we haven't been releasing a lot of specifically themes, and that's because there's a whole ecosystem for Bootstrap. And, uh, you know, there is so much we want to do within DevExtreme, uh, and we've got a lot of work left to do, but uh, we just have, we don't have the bandwidth necessarily to do everything, so we're trying to make sure we do the most important things. All right, so I don't think I see any more questions. And if I've missed any questions, again, uh, reach out to me and let's give the obligatory slide. Mehul, Mehul H at DevExpress, uh, at Mehul Harry. And uh, again, you know, it's a really good time if you're a client side developer with, any, with these frameworks like Angular and Knockout, all that good stuff. And DevExtreme is right there. DevExtreme can help you create some beautiful interfaces. So I'll hand it back to you, Amanda. Great. Thanks, Mahul. Um, all right, everybody. Like I mentioned before, today's webinar will be available later on our DevExpress YouTube channel, and I po just posted that link in uh, the chat box. Uh, we do have more webinars in the works um, coming up March 14th using DevExpress MVVM Magic with WPF and WinForms Part 2, presented by DevExpress uh, technical evangelist Don Wibier, and then March 28th, ASP.NET MBC Frequently Asked Questions answered. Um, and we're adding webinars, our webinars all the time, so feel free to check out devexpress.com slash webinars to register and see what's coming up. And that is it for this one. Thank you so much to Mahul. Thank you all for joining us. And of course, thank you for choosing DevExpress. Bye-bye.